who is the coach of the Santiago High School Sharks out of Corona. Y'all won today on the girls' side. 18 points. Lead it, let it off. 18 by, points. 18 points, bro. Man. Didn't, didn't that. Let off by Riley Blade, right? A 16-02. And uh, Braylon Cumbie running. Braylon Combe. Combe? Combe. Yes. 17-12. Yes. And Taylor Davis right behind her with the 17-18. We also had in uh, fifth place, Madeline Sayana. 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 Actually, Sayana. Sayana. Yes. 17-24. Yes, amazing, sir. Yes, sir. Amazing group out here. Coming off of Clovis this past week. It's been amazing. This is the third year winning the Inland Empire Challenge. Bro, it's been like, where were we seen the whole rise. Yeah, the whole it's the whole rise. rise of Santiago. Saw the rise. Yeah, yes. That Roosevelt at that time. Um, so we're in the same league and everything, right. so definitely crossed paths so many times. But what has it been like the past four years as the boys were really doing well, the girls basically simultaneously, and now you are number four in the state ranks and everything? Like, Yeah, it's it's been a journey. You know, it's a process just like anything else. You know, if you put in the work, the results will come. And, you know, part of that is building the culture mm. and the mindset of being a champion and being a winning program. And so, you know, it took a while to get, you know, to get them to think like I want them to think and to believe in themselves like I want them to believe. It took, it took a little while to get it, but now the culture's there. Yeah. You know, we've had a, you know, we had a few good runners over the past year that helped, you know, yeah. um, bring that, that culture to the program, that, that belief, and now we're, we're on a roll. Yeah, that culture and like that expect that you expect to like be good and be someone that is up there. What is it? What are what are some things that you you know did since you've been here to like kind of build that? Is it just like kind of speeches or is it more so just the performances of those those leaders on the team? Well, I do speeches. I I'm a very inspirational and motivational speaker. So it's not about that. It's really about having the right leadership mm. with, amongst my team captains and my seniors. Watch out, watch out. <laughs> watch out, watch out, watch out. Um, having, having the right leadership um, with, with my captains and my seniors and, and incorporating my belief system. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't win, if we, so we either win or we learn. Yeah. And that's what we kind of, we go on it. And as, as the years have progressed and we learned a lot, learned a lot, learned a lot, and now we're winning. And that goes right into really our theme of our podcast today, because we're talking about like PR, you know, and there's a certain thing where like coaches and parents, we can do a disservice at times or even friends or family. The first thing we ask a kid is, did you PR? And it's all like, well, every course is kind of different. At the end of the day, the PR doesn't really matter too much. Like where did you place? How did you battle through the race? How did you learn everything? So like, how do you kind of like translate that with your athletes after they had a good race or and a, well had a bad race and when they have a good race to have those conversations? So, so it's like this: each race calls for something different. When we're at a league meet, times don't matter. It's yeah. about placing. Uh -huh. When you're at Woodbridge, you want to run fast. You want to try to get a PR. When you're at the Inland Empire Championships, you want to try to run fast. So. Each race brings upon it, its own goal for the day. Yeah. So Clovis, you know, we're in a, a battle for the state title. So you kind of got to you know where your, where your state opponents are. You got to kind of know where where the Division One opponent, you, yeah. you just got to be aware of the athletes you're competing against. So it just depends on the, the race. Some races are meant to try to run as fast as you can. Some races are meant, forget about time, it's about place. You got to gotta try to get that place. I think that's where like coaching and the parents really comes in of like identifying the objective for each race. Yes. You know? I, I believe all the good coaches will have an objective for their team each race. Yeah. It's because each race is different. Yeah. It, it's not, I mean, we would love to run a PR every race out, but that's not realistic. So, you know, you, you have to understand what the course is, how difficult the course is, how much competition might be there. All those different things. And then I think this will be our last question to get you out of here. Just how do you translate that? when people are could be combative or just like the growing pains of building that culture that you're trying to build at Santiago, I believe that to come from like parents and outside and just even like athletes at times as you went through the transition of taking over head coaching, how did you have to co combat those uh, growing pains and really translate like this is our objective and like this is the way we can right. go to success. So, so basically, 
with, with regards to coaching, I'm the professional. Yeah. So like if, if I'm sick, I'll go to the doctor and I'll see a professional. If I need a lawyer, I'll go see a lawyer. They're a professional at yeah. what they do. I'm a professional at what I do. So I stand firm on what I believe and what I know, what I'm teaching. So ain't no parent gonna come and tell me what to do in my program. Ain't no athlete gonna tell me, oh, I'm doing training on my own. There's no need for all of that. Yeah. If you come to my program and you do the training and you follow the program, you're going to be successful. You're gonna run faster. You're gonna run personal records. And so my main goal, one of my main goals with my team throughout the year, stay healthy. Yeah. You can't run a personal record, you can't win a race, you can't win league titles if you're injured or sick. So I put a high priority on keeping my athletes healthy and, and injury free and feeling their best when it's time to race at the end. So it's, it's a process of making sure that they peak and run their best at the end. So as well as we've run, I still feel some of our best racing is going to take place later in the season. Yeah. You got Mount Sac next week? We got Mount Sac. Riley won't run at Mount Sac next week because this makes two races in a row. She'll be preparing for the postseason. Um, and I may pull one or two other girls out, but you know, we're going we're to make sure that those that need to run that race will run that yeah. race. Those that need a break or need to just kind of prepare for the postseason, that's how, that's how I do it. It's about making sure they're right. So we don't run every race every weekend all the time. It's being, about being strategic as a coach and positioning your athletes to be successful. Yeah, I'm sure you're planning a long postseason. So. Yeah, 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 the girls express, especially are we're planning to go to NXN. We believe we can make it. I feel like we've got the right team in place. And you think about it, all those girls are coming back except one. That's crazy. Oh, bro. Big eight, man. Oh, man. I e. All those oh, girls man. are coming back except one. And um, you know, I have a fabulous freshman as well. She she has she um she got a stress fracture, so she's out. She ran 18-12 um, at Woodbridge as a freshman. So she'll be coming back next year as well. So we're gonna be stronger, even stronger next year. So but as far as this year, we're really focused on the, the end goal, trying to be state champions and trying to challenge for a national title. It really hurts me to say this, Coach, but like your girls' team is better than any Roosevelt team. I'm, I'm like, it's, 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 I think you guys are. I think next year is going to be like special. I think y'all are better than that boys' team 2017. You'll hear it first from me now. I think I could have three girls break 16 minutes at Woodbridge next year, maybe four. Damn. I'm, 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 <laughs> yeah. So we'll see. We'll see. I mean, I, I feel good about it. The, the athletes are responding appropriately to the training. Riley is leading the team as a, as a good leader. And, you know, when you got good leadership, yeah. that matters. For real, for real. I appreciate you staying down with Take us. notes, everybody. Take <laughs> notes. There are coaches out there. Come on. Yeah, best of luck going forward in the season, man. Hey, thank you very much. We're almost there. We'll just keep chugging away. Keep them healthy and keep them feeling good.